there's a whole spectrum of illness that could be related to somebody who has a chronic medical condition, anywhere from depression to anxiety to bereavement. If a family member dies, it's just a period of grief, uh, to true mental health disorders such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder. So the most common are depression and anxiety, uh, and about one in five patients who has some form of heart disease, cardiovascular disease, will have some form of depression or anxiety, so the two intermix quite a bit. After a patient receives a diagnosis, usually a, a life-changing diagnosis, one of the most common being heart failure, that's a chronic condition that patients have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, or cardiovascular disease, somebody who was otherwise healthy who has a stent placed or an open heart surgery. These are things that patients have to revisit and make life changes for uh, forever. So that comes with new medications, with doctor's visits, with sometimes limitations in physical activity, having to change a job if your job was physically active and you have certain limitations now. And so people can go from being otherwise healthy to having a whole change in their lifestyle. And that comes with uh, patients who have to understand that these this is their new normal. And so continual screening, whether or not that's by physicians or by family members or friends who just try to keep an eye out for patients and pick up on small changes, um, that can be as easy as asking, how are you feeling today? Any concerns that you have about how you're feeling, how you're dealing with your surgery, with your procedure? And patients, most patients are willing to open up. It, it's just taking the time to ask. Patients have different symptoms of depression and anxiety, such as inability to sleep or sleeping too much. People who are now have no appetite or who, who eat too much. So patients who have no joy in activity, patients who say that they no longer, they feel numb, they don't experience, don't feel any emotions. Those are some small symptoms that patients might feel. And with that, it, there's different treatments. So it could be just referring a patient to a support group or to a physician to talk about, whether it's a psychiatrist or group therapy, to talk about their um, depression and anxiety. It could be medication. Sometimes patients do benefit from medication if the thought is that it's a neurohormonal balance or imbalance. We have an integrative health network here, so lots of different resources, whether that be cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, acupuncture, stress relief, hypnotherapy, group chats, discussions, support groups, or d different treatments such as stress reduction, exercise, exercise is very important, or other ways uh, to help with sleep, sleep therapy. All of those are important to approaching the patient as a whole and not just uh, physical and, and mind-body together. It's not always at that first appointment, but later on as patients go through the journey that they realize, hey, I'm really struggling with something, and, and that's normal. That is normal for patients.